and so it doesn't matter if anyone shows up at a venue. Uh, that the, the real objective here is just to do the ten venues across Canada uh, to be able to say that the information has been officially distributed. Uh, so it's not so much about having a fantastic venue, which being nice, you know, it'd be nice if thirty people showed up. At the same time. Uh, there's nothing that could happen that would be disparaging at this point. And so it's, it's all, uh, well, um, shits and giggles, as, as uh, some people would say. And um, what do you hope to gain from this event? Oh, just a, yeah, just a, a lot more um, info about the actual logistics of it and people's you know, black and white rights to be there. And did you ever uh, think before about whether or not you had the right to sleep? Is that something that never crossed your mind? Not since I watched a documentary on, it was to do with the young, young man who went to Victoria and he was um, put in jail because of sleeping. <laughs> and it was shocking that it could go on. He was doing a hunger strike. And I'm not sure where his whereabouts is now, but the documentary was really kind of showcasing this issue, which never gets attention. David Arthur Johnson. Hey. Hello. You did the hunger strike. Yes. No way. And, and it, I mean, some people might think of it as a bit sociopathic, just the whole I would rather die than lose money. Mm. But at the same time, it, 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 uh, it, just, it frees up my mind, like I'm not stressing about money at all. And now Lily got this grant, and uh, uh, in the last couple of years, I've started using gift cards. Uh, and as like I, I, there's a fine line, and so gift cards aren't actually money. And, and Lily got this crazy grant. And, like I got here two days ago. I show up, and <laughs> Lily shows me this. The, the, yeah, it, it essentially, I'm sort of the richest non-money user guy in the world right now. A uh, non-what? Non-money user. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I'm digressing. <laughs> <laughs> Your entire home. life is based on gift cards and weird local currency. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but uh, you were you were asking how uh, the ten city thing. Um, it was more I was just doing my own thing, uh, not using money, sleeping in the park. I was sort of a character in Victoria. I was meditating down at the causeway every day, which is sort of this uh, harbor thing in front of the big Empress Hotel and by the legislative building. Okay. It's like the most touristy. Oh, area. okay, with all the flowers and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, for like five years, I was sitting down there from two to ten, like extreme, for two to ten hours a day for 26 days a month for five years. Yeah. Uh, just meditating and talking with everyone about the meaning of life and all this stuff. And eventually the parks workers didn't like that I was a constant sleeping in the park every night. And so they started putting um, fertilizer, like put the ground up fish where I slept. At first I thought it was just goose poop because it smells a lot like chicken poop. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but you get into your bed and it's sort of pitch black and you put your blanket roll down and then you lay down and what's that That's smell? And then, uh, and then it's just this sudden, it hits you like, they did it on purpose. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then, then I would have to like go wash off my beard with bleach and, and then they did it again. It's a huge long story. Like the, uh, in 2004 I started and then January 2004 to November 2004, I had been arrested maybe 40 or 50 times. Oh. Yeah, it, like there was a two month period where I was arrested 40 times. Uh, and all just arrests, like a uh, breach of peace, so there's no paperwork. It's this sort of like drunken public thing. They take you to cells and release you in the morning. And then there's six times they drove me out of city limits. And then for 20 days, they hired a security guard to stand over me and not let me sleep. So that's actual like literal torture because yeah. like their job is to arrest me and take like get me in front of a judge that's why i'm doing this get me in front of a judge so i make a ruling on this and they, they waited eight months to do that which was the most beautiful surreal eight months anyone mm -hmm. could possibly imagine because it was at this uh, saint anne's academy which is a uh, it used to be a, 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 a catholic school for girls but years ago it was converted into the offices of the ministry of advanced education it was owned by the and they have a beautiful grounds, uh, uh, and then in the backyard, which I discovered on a momentous day, which there's a story behind, uh, there was the summer house in the novitiate garden. It's this gorgeous gazebo surrounded by this like hoity-toity, rich Victorian, like manicured garden, and this became my home for about five months. And then so my routine would uh, go down and meditate. Uh, talk about the meaning of life all day, go to my favorite dumpster, get something crazy like strawberry, banana milk, and avocado, and smoked salmon wraps, okay. and then go sit in this completely surreal, beautiful spot and have this dinner. And it got to the point where the security guard would come around and say, hey Dave, hey, and would walk, oh, really? walk in just, because the cops, they weren't calling the cops anymore, they were instructed not to, and, and then, there's so many stories, like I, I keep digressing. The, mm -hmm. There was a, one of the guards during weekdays was instructed to come sit with me. He at, started at seven o'clock in the morning and he's supposed to sit there until I get up and leave. And so he would bring a book and he would sit on the bench just at the park. I, I, I would just sort of <laughs> get up and say good morning. And, and in the DVD, we have him admitting to the Provincial Capital Commission hiring the security guards to not let me sleep, and so like we had evidence and testimony about the torture and things like that, and uh, just surreality after surreality. Uh, and then so we lose the provincial court one, and and anyone who ever if they go this the route of getting arrested to challenge the laws, this is the route that happens: is you lose in provincial court because they don't do constitutional challenges, uh, and so. You lose in provincial court, and you appeal that with a, uh, a constitutional challenge that the, the city's bylaw is a section seven deprivation. The, the section seven being a deprivation of life, liberty, and security of the person. Mm. Uh, and and so that's that's the argument. And generally, the city's argument would be a section one argument against that, saying that it's a reasonable deprivation of life. Uh, section one being essentially where martial law is based and the War Measures Act that the government is allowed to uh, deprive people of their lives in the best interest of Canada. Right. Yes. Based on their discretion. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and so that's generally the argument, and that's why we thought we were going to lose the first round. Uh, but the judge found that the city's section one argument wasn't valid because. The, the homeless people sleeping in the park were not um, a threat or a danger. Like, presuming innocence of people, you, you can't automatically presume that homeless people are a danger to you. Mm -hmm. And so you can't automatically or arbitrarily make a law that says homeless people can't do that. Uh, and the, the judge was really smart. And then sometimes I don't know if she was genuine or if it's like some drawn out, huge, long, professional spin doctor plot to, to, to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. But she was saying that, well, what's the difference between 
uh, you know, a homeless person sleeping on the ground and flattening the grass. But the, their concern was the turf damage. And, and, and so, so the, the judge was cute. She was like, so you're saying that a homeless person can lay out their sleeping bag and sleep under a tree uh, and then, you know, potentially damage turf. Mm -hmm. But they can't do the same thing with a tent. And, and so the judge was pointing out that if, if, like, you can't make tents illegal in that regard unless you make all of sleeping illegal in that regard, because either way there's turf being damaged. And so, because you can't say that that's illegal for a homeless person to be sleeping under a tree, that you can't say arbitrarily a tent is illegal because it's really not doing any more damage than not having a tent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's all in these things. Uh, these are the reasons for judgments. Uh, the Supreme Court one, and then this is this is the one where the judge said, that like in, in the end, is the disposition where she says that it's not constitutional to yeah, it's, it's not constitutional to deny, deny homeless folk their uh, ability to erect temporary abodes, and then this is the spin doctory one where the city got the appeals court to say, add the uh, amend this ruling to say at night. And so what this does is make it that the right to sleep in the day has yet to be determined. Oh, so you can do it at night. Mm -hmm. which, is, which is sort of the major thing. Like that's, it can be done in Victoria right now. Really? It's legal to have a tent at night. So before that, that was your whole journey was to at least be able to sleep at night because they were even allowing you to do that, right? Well, th I wasn't, I was going for across the board. Like you, if I'm acting yeah, conscientiously, yeah. you can't deny me conscientious behavior because that means I'm acting in the common good and I'm neat and tidy, I'm out of the way. Yeah. And so there, there's no reasonable reason for denying me what I'm doing. Uh, and, and so the, yeah, the, the daytime, nighttime issue. Uh, it, it's weird because people want to say, well, the city's allowing me to sleep at night, but what's really happening is the city's no longer violating the Constitution by denying you the right to sleep at night. You've always had the right to sleep mm. at night, and you have the right to sleep at day, mm. but it, the city's ability to do that has yet to be, well, successfully challenged. So it's like the right is there, but when it comes down to it, like for somebody who knows, it's yeah. not upheld. No. And uh, so after the last 40 day fast, like halfway through it, I came up with this cross Canada tour thing, like to make it interesting, because uh, to make people, a lot of people look in this direction and see that like, this is a viable thing. Because at this point, I'll do this and then I'll, whatever July 14th, I'll make it. 